Welcome back to 30 Days of Lightroom, and we are here in Adobe Lightroom Classic. And today we're gonna to be talking all about tone curves and how we use tone curves to post-process our image. So over here on the right, again, we are in our develop module and you can see our basic tab. We've already done basic image editing and basic toning here. Hit that little arrow to close that. And we can hit this arrow next to tone curve to open up our tone curve window. So we're gonna be talking all about this tone curve window tab over here on the right today. And remember when we talked about basic toning, we kind of work top to bottom. I do the same thing with my tabs. I will do basic, I will do the tone curve as adding secondary contrast, and then I will just work my way down these tabs. And then once I get to the end, I can always go back to the beginning and make massive edits if I absolutely need to. But start with basic, then we'll move on to our tone curve, which is where we are today. Now in Lightroom Classic, there are really two interfaces for the tone curve, and I don't particularly like this one. You can see down here to the right, there's a little button. It looks like a line with a point in the middle. You can click that to play with your channels. And I like this tone curve a little bit better because I can actually add points and subtract points. But I will show you guys how to use this region tone curve right here, where you can actually click and drag and you can see I bent the tone curve without actually leaving a point and I can edit the highlights, I can edit the lights, the darks and the shadows. And if you remember in our basic tab right here, we had highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. Lightroom for some reason decided to rename them highlights, lights, darks and shadows, but you can think of these as your whites, highlights, shadows, and blacks if you like to kind of think of them corresponding to your basic toning tab. So if I want to reset this, I can right click reset all because that didn't look very great. And you can see with my curve, if I click and drag up, I am increasing the exposure or increasing the brightness. If I drag down, no matter where it is on the tone curve, I am decreasing the exposure or turning the exposure down and decreasing the brightness. So if we go ahead, we turn down our highlights, up our shadows, kind of make a flatter image, or we can turn down our shadows and turn up our highlights and add just a touch of contrast. Now, when it comes to the tone curve, a little bit goes a long way. We will reset that again. But remember how I said this is a secondary edit to my basic. I will get my basic toning done and get it about 99% the way I like it. And then I will come down to the tone curve and just tweak the contrast just a little bit. You can see here, there's a little thing that says point curve, kind of like a preset medium contrast, strong contrast. If I want to go to a flat line, we have a flat line for linear contrast. But again, I don't like this window very much, fairly self-explanatory. And these little sliders down here will work similarly to levels. If you've ever used levels in Photoshop, let's see, we turn our highlights up and then we can mess with the levels of our highlights, the levels of our midtones levels of shadows. But I again, will reset this. Don't like this interface that much. I will click this little point with a line right here. And this will allow me to actually click and drag and drop points on a line. And I like this so much better. You can right click, hit flatten curve to reset our curve. And another tool I want to show you in the upper left here is the targeted adjustment tool. I can click that and I can actually zoom into our image. We'll press the letter Z to zoom in and I can select tones in the image and either turn up the exposure or turn down the exposure. And you can see we just made a massive adjustment because we are editing the entire curve because there's only one point on the curve right now. Let's hit Control Z. I'm gonna add a point to the middle. It's a little trick before I start messing with my targeted adjustment tool. And then now select targeted adjustment, turn down our darkest parts of our images or our shadows. I can turn up the shadows by clicking and dragging on the image and dragging up or down. I can do the same thing with our highlights. If I think the highlights on Ashley's face are a little too much, I can turn them down. But remember, little edits, very subtle edits go a very long way. And you can see you can absolutely break your image if you start to go too far and get this kind of posterized effect. It doesn't look very great. You can always take this way too far. So I will go ahead, flatten our curve. And honestly, I really just wanna add a little bit of an S curve, brighten up some of the highlights, add a little punch to our shadows, hit Z to zoom out. And that honestly looks pretty good. You can see in the upper left, again, above our targeted adjustment tool, we can shut our tone curve on and off 
and we can see the little bit of contrast we added. You can go a long way with the tone curve by just making very, very minor edits. Again, with the point curve here, we can add strong contrast if we want to. We can add medium contrast or linear contrast will reset the line. Another thing you can do with the point curve that you can't do when you're messing with your regions is you can lift your shadows. And this is a very popular look. Lift your shadows right here and kind of clip our highlights just a touch. Kind of like a film look, an analog look just a little bit. But some people really take this really far and really lift up their shadows and you get kind of a matte look to your image. Kind of neat. Some people like that, some people don't, but you do have the option to do that with your tone curve. And again, flatten curve. And I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of contrast and that looks pretty good. Now you will see down here the word channel, RGB, and some options here. Now this is why I really like this interface version of the tone curve. Again, you can go back and forth by clicking the little line with the point right there. But what I like about channel is I can go in here, let's go to our red channel, do our targeted adjustment tool, and maybe the skin tones have a little bit too much red and they're looking a little too warm. I can click, drag down, and take away some of the red, or I can click and drag up and add some of the red. You can see our tone curve here is moving can add red to the highlights, take away red from the highlights, can add red to the shadows here. See very red shadows, the dress is turning a purpley red. I can take some red away. All different options that you have, I'll go ahead and reset that. And you can do the same with green and you can do the same with blue. So if your white balance, for example, isn't quite getting you the image that you like, you can go into your channels and manually make adjustments. Maybe for example, this dress is reflecting a lot of blue from the sky. You can see it's looking a little bit blue. I can go in, I'll usually like to add a starter point. I can go ahead and bring down some of the blue and you can see we removed the blue cast from our dress. We can flatten it. You can see that blue comes right back. Again, very subtle, subtlety is the key with the tone curve, little edits, make a huge difference. And remember also with the tone curve, this is not the HSL slider. You are messing purely with tones and not color. So if I have my targeted adjustment tool and I drag it down, I'm messing with the tones, not the color of the skin. So if I wanted to add some blue to the shadows, subtract it from the highlights. Again, I'm playing with the tonal values of the image, not the colors of the image. And I'm not selecting color, I'm selecting tones. So that looks a little rough. Let's flatten the curve. And that is really our tone curve. Really important here to know your targeted adjustment tool where you can go in and edit individual tones by hand. Again, you are selecting tones, you're not selecting colors. I would be selecting shadows here. I'm not selecting brown hair, and I'd be selecting highlights here, not skin tone. So go ahead, flatten our curve. We'll go back to RGB. Again, RGB affects all of our tones, all of our red tones, green tones, and blue tones that make up our image. And I think this contrast looks really good. And lastly, we can go up here to the upper left and we can turn off our tone curve and turn on our tone curve. And we can do that with all of our tabs. This is like a little light switch to Turn the tab off. You can see it's all grayed out. You can turn it back on by clicking it, but you can turn your little light switch for your tab on and off right there and it'll gray out so you can't do anything. But there, that looks pretty good. That is really everything you need to know about the tone curve to be successful in Lightroom. And I really hope you guys enjoyed something in this video and we will be diving more in depth into more of these little tabs in future videos. So if you like this video and learned something, please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe for all of our 30 days of Lightroom videos. And of course, share this video with a friend that really helps out the channel. So until next time, get out and go shoot.